Anyone that's been programming for a while has noticed patterns within their code. And in some cases, some of these patterns almost look like you could just create a template of some type in order to implement those patterns. Well, Visual Studio has a facility for doing this called Snippets. And uh, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how snippets work and how you can create your own. Now, for my example, I'm creating a stereotypical employee class. And I plan on using this employee class in some data binding scenarios within Silverlight. So that means that I'll need to implement uh, properties and I also need to implement an I notify property change, uh, implement that interface along with an event so that whenever these properties get updated, the data binding mechanism knows about it and knows to update what's on the screen. I'll give this class an employee ID element first. And I'm going to start off by doing this manually. So to implement this, I need to create an employee ID field and it's going to be private and to access this there needs to be a public property the same data type I also call that employee ID the get accessor will be implemented exactly as you would expect it to be and since this is being used for data binding for the set I have to first check to see whether or not the new value is different than uh, the old value for this field. If it is different, then uh, I first go ahead and assign the value to the field. And then I raise the event so that it's known that this field has been updated. Now for creating my template, our snippets as they're called within Visual Studio, uh, I'm going to be creating a file within uh, one of my Visual Studio subfolders. Within your documents folder, you'll see a Visual Studio 2010 or 2008 or 2005 folder, depending on which version that you have installed. Uh, and if you go into the folder for uh, whichever version of Visual Studio that you have installed, uh, from here on out, the code path is going to be the same. You'll see a code snippets folder. And since I'm using C Sharp, I will want to put my snippets within a C Sharp folder. And for making new snippet, snippets, I always create, have an XML file here within this folder that is called snippets template.xml. Uh, and it contains the basic information that you're going to need in order to create one of these templates. And as you can tell from this extension, um, a snippet is going to be an XML file. But the actual extension that Visual Studio will use for these files is going to be snippet. So you can see I've already uh, created an observable field snippet here which is what I'm going to call that code pattern that I had just been using. Now this right now, that uh, observable field snippet folder and my uh, blank template folder really contain the same information. Right now they're identical. So I already have this open within Visual Studio so you can see what's within it. Um, so you're, you're going to want to give your snippet a title and a shortcut name. The shortcut name is a string that you type into Visual Studio to go ahead and bring up that snippet and start populating it. And the snippet can have several, it can have uh, zero to many parameters. Um, and in the case of my employee object, I need for a snippet for this to have um, really two parameters. I need to know the data type of the field that I'm generating. And I need to know the name that I want to give to that field. So first thing I'm going to do within this snippet is uh, ensure that there's two parameters. Um, I want to specify the data type first. And I'll be typing in a string to do that, so I'll leave that a string. And the second parameter I need is going to be the element name, which is what I always have as a default parameter. So I'll just leave that in there. I want to call this snippet or give it the shortcut the text observable field. For the title, I'll make it pretty much the same thing, only with the space in it. And so the only thing that's left is to go ahead and specify the code for my template. So to do that, I'll start off by taking. Um, the employee ID field which I've already implemented. I'm going to copy this over and then go back and make changes so that it uh, knows where these parameters should be populated. I always make my snippets without indentation. 
and then after this gets uh, populated within a code file I'll indent it as far as appropriate there so I'll start off by specifying where the data type parameter goes and the parameters are always going to be enveloped within dollar signs and the data type is only directly referenced in two places uh, the other parameter was element name so anywhere that I had employee ID within here I'm going to replace that um, with element name wrapped within dollars and to make sure I get everything in this case I'll go ahead and use the search and replace I want to ensure that it's only doing this within a current document is not to affect anything else that I may have open and uh, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and replace one at a time just so that you can see where this change is applied so that's the, where the field was first declared uh, within my uh, get accessor within the set where I'm checking to see whether or not it's equal to the new value um, where I am actually setting the new value and let's see it looks like that's where it has stopped but there's ah I know this is a case uh, sensitive search well, no it looks like it's not for some reason it did not get two of the fields so I'll just change these uh, manually so that's for the property name and then when I'm raising the event I have to pass the name of the property again and that's it my snippet is defined um, and the only thing that's left there is it needs to be saved I'll go ahead and save everything for now okay and that's it it's saved so now I can use it so if I go back to my source file I've already created an employee ID um, my employee also needs to have a name so let's give them a first name and a last name so I've made that change I've saved it and I'm going to delete this bad code that ended up being generated by my uh, bad snippet okay, it looks like it's only two lines so that's not a big deal okay so now all I need to do is type in the name of the template or the snippet I need to give it the data type which is string and uh, after I put in a data type I press tab and it's asking me for the next parameter which is going to be the name of this property uh, and I will call this first name pressing enter and it's gone through and it's uh, filled this out all the way down now I'll go ahead and create um, another one for the employee's last name it's going to be a type of string and that's it and so you can see I can more easily uh, create my code uh, this way Now, the one thing I don't like about doing snippets is in this case I would like for this to have been gen uh, created with a lowercase uh, first letter and using snippets there's not really a way that you can do that there, Visual Studio actually has some other facilities that you could use for doing that but I'm only concentrating on snippets today um, and so it's not really a lot of effort to um, get this renamed Oh, and just so that you know, I'm able to more quickly rename this because I happen to have um, a plugin installed called Resharper. Um, and it automatically recognizes that I should probably have the field named differently. And so it's just giving me the option of renaming it, and it will go through and do the renaming. Um, but either way, generating the um, fields this way is much faster than typing those manually over and over and over again for each uh, instance in which they occur. Um, and you might recall me earlier stating that my preference is to go ahead and create my snippets so that they don't contain the indentation and then uh, once I've generated all of my fields I just go ahead and indent them as far as appropriate but I thought that this would be a simple example for someone that decided they wanted to get started